Hello, everyone. I'm Shannon. Jerry is not on this episode, and you're going to hear why in just a few, but we're back for episode 111 of the Arner Adventures podcast. So this is an episode that we've wanted to do for a while, but we had to get past the holiday, some scheduling stuff. But this one's really special because it's about mother-daughter relationships and the benefits that this relationship has on both mom and daughter. So with that being said, our guest today is an expert in the field of the mother-daughter relationship with Shannon, (laughs) (laughs) introducing my mom, Beverly. Mom, thank you for being here. And thank you for having me here. Again. So this isn't mom's first time on the podcast. She joined us for episode 64, which is a must listen. We're going to link link it down in the show notes. We talked about the Murdahl murders and the verdict came in live as we were recording. That's right. It was a lot of fun. Mom is an expert on the Murdahl murders as well. You're very versatile. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, mom, tell us. I know I'm with you, but tell us where we're coming to them from. We are from Lenore, North Carolina. So we're the foothills of the mountains near Blowing Rock. That's right. And so I am here with her recording. So um, we're going to talk about what this is sort of in the place of in just a minute. But we wanted to have this episode because there have been multiple studies that have come out in the past and some most recently about the benefits that the mother-daughter relationship has on both mom and daughter. And you and I were talking about it and thought, wow, this will be really great to talk about on the podcast since it's so interesting. And it's not just beneficial to anyone out there who's a mom. It's not beneficial just to people who are daughters, but it's beneficial to both. And Mm -hmm. so before we get into it and have um, get in deeper about our relationship and our conversations, let's talk about some of those studies. So the first one we'll talk about is the Journal of Neuroscience published a study that showed that the mother-daughter relationships are the strongest of all relationships. So all, all the parent-child bonds, I should say. They found that it's due to the brain chemistry and how it processes empathy, which I know you're going to have something to say about that. And another study is by the University of Connecticut found that people derive greater health benefits from discussing difficult issues with mom than with talking with dad. And then another one, the Journal of American Medical Association published a study that showed spending time and communicating with your mom regularly will enable her to live longer. And I think that's the one that we I was talking to you about one morning and said, oh, my gosh, guess what I just read? And then I said that and I was like, oh, isn't that really nice? Because we talk every morning. (laughs) And um, in that, it's talked about that when daughters either it it can be sharing a meal, it can be watching a movie or just talking to their mothers. It helps both of their mental health. So there's multiple benefits that are experienced by the mother and daughter in this relationship. So let's give a little bit of backstory without getting too deep into it because we have limited amount of time here. (laughs) Um, Mom, you had me when you were 17. Mm -hmm. And so we're not that far off in in age difference. Correct. So do you think that that helps or hurts our relationship? I think it helps us because I felt like I grew up with you. So music, a lot of the music is the same. Um, a lot of experiences, world events, uh, local, and your sports. Um, I think that had a lot to do with it and that I loved going to these things and I loved seeing them. And so I was so invested, maybe too invested sometimes. <laughs> uh, I have been thrown off a few fields before. <laughs> but um, anyway, I I really think that that was beneficial. And I I know that a lot of people would say no, because it is so very young. And, you know, it's not the ideal, because you don't have a lot of life experience um, in dealing with children. But I think that one, it has helped me be responsible to you to to help you, like when you have a question, and I know that 
you know, Betty White Mm -hmm. is our child. It's your child, my grandchild. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about that, we don't talk about her as a dog. We talk about her as, you know, our child and, and that. So I think it's easier for me to relate to you because hmm. we are so close in age. Right. Okay. I agree. I think that, you know, they say a lot of the times, and I'm not being a human parent, they say a lot of times that you, oh, you shouldn't be your child's friend. And I think there are some people who, uh, I can think of some in my life who you know, who uh, growing up, they would try to be so much younger and fit in with their daughter's friends and fit in. And I don't think that that, I think that's kind of what they're talking about. I don't think it's what we're talking about. No. Because I think we are, I mean, you're my best friend. Mm-hmm. And I I think that is very beneficial. And it hasn't always been that way, which we'll get yeah. into. But again, the reason this came up is, and I've talked about this on the podcast before, you know, we are morning conversations. So let's get into that a little bit. I talk to you every morning when I'm on my walk with Betty White. Mm -hmm. We talk no matter what. Sometimes there isn't as much to talk about. And sometimes there isn't enough time. And we still are on the phone. And it's become part of my morning routine, part of your morning Mm -hmm. routine. So what do you think is the, the biggest thing or just little thing? What do you think you get most out of those conversations? And then I'll, of course, share mine too. I think building the relationship, I think that's helped us a lot, especially like the things that we've learned about our relationship as you grew up. Um, I think it's keeping in touch, keeping relevant. Mm -hmm. That's something that's probably so, so important to me is being relevant in your life. Um, Being a little bit up to date, except for technology, which is (laughs) I am so technology challenged. I call her Sheezus. Um, So, so when I call, say the typical commercial stuff where I'll call and say, this isn't working. And she'll say, well, you see this button? Um, No. Where is this button? Describe it to me. So even though we have relationship like that, but we also, you know, I can, I can relate so much to your life and I can have so much empathy and, and, you know, I'm there for you. Yeah. I think for me, and I'm very, I am very routine and sort of ritualistic with that. But for me, it's almost like a, um, like a comfort, like a security blanket in a way Mm -hmm. that, you know, I've told you this before that when things are really, really shitty, that I feel like, if I come here or you're, you come to us, it's all going to be okay. And I do feel like as I get older, I start realizing that you don't always know this. <laughs> like how <laughs> yes, you, I do. how you used to, <laughs> you still say everything's going to be okay. And I'm like, no, it's not going to be okay. Or, or no, it might not be okay. And in your mindset, I think you are trying to say, but it's all going to turn out the way it, it needs to turn out. Yes. Yes. But sometimes I don't want to hear it. Sometimes I'm just like, no, I, it's not going to be okay. Because in my world, whatever it turns out is not okay. It's just, but anyway, I do like, um, I get out of that and I get, just like you said, like relevance and feeling like because there is now a six hour drive distance between us, it doesn't feel like that. It's a connectiveness. Yeah. 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 Um, I think when I tell you everything's going to be okay, <clears throat> that's the way I grew up. My dad said that all the time. But I think more what it means is negative things are going to come and you're going to have to deal with them. But when I went through some really bad times in my life, what I would say to myself is this hurts so bad right now. I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. And then I would say, but tomorrow this is going to be in the past. And in the next two days, it's going to be in the past. So it does resolve itself, maybe not in the way that we want it to, but life goes on. And as cliche as that is, it does. It's there for a reason. I think no matter what, and you'll, even this past week, what you said, 
I don't know. I, I feel like I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear or, or do you want to hear what my thoughts are on this or whatever? And that mm -hmm. happens a lot where you're like, well, do you want to hear this or, or what? And sometimes it's like, I tell you, or I ask you because I know you're going to give me the real deal. Yeah. And sometimes I do get upset because I, it's like, I, maybe I don't want to hear that, but I do. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I know you're going to be real with me. And I've said this before that, um, about like authenticity, I feel like I can completely lay it on the, on the table, mm -hmm. like with you. Mm -hmm. And I don't feel that way with everybody, like in my life, you know? Right. So I feel like you also know the background and you know, everything. So you can counter, you can throw in those, uh, things into the decision and how you may understand how I feel. Right. You know, and, and sometimes when I'm going to say something that I know is going to hurt or it's going to be not what you want to hear. Yeah. I temper the fact of our past. I temper the fact of the trials you've gone through, but I also want to be realistic to you and, um, and help prepare you for these things that are going to come. Yeah. So, um, and, and sometimes it's not what's going to come. It's what could come. Yeah. But I think we also do this thing because we we are similar in how we look at things. And we both, I don't think you mind if I talk about this. No, I don't care. I'm an open book. Talk we about both um, can spiral downward. Mm -hmm. And I think what's really nice, and actually the next question I was going to get into is how do you think that our conversations have evolved over time? And I will say this too, and I've said this on the podcast before, that when we made our big lifestyle change and moved. I remember you being so upset because you were like, I'm never going to see you. But I was like, but we're going to be closer because I don't have the life that I did. And we are closer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I feel like now that we have these conversations in the morning and it is like a staple mm -hmm. of our life, um, the way that it has evolved, I think, is that um, you and I, I think, are more in tune to when the other person is going to begin spiraling. Yeah, I agree with that. And I think that we can, we can, while ago when you were talking about not being, I mean, about being honest, about looking forward, this is what could happen. I also think that you and I have a tendency to look at worst case. Yeah. And I'm learning in therapy <laughs> <laughs> that while that is a defense mechanism, it's like, so you can prepare yourself. And I do, in a way, do feel secure about preparing for worst case. I have also learned that it's a form of anxiety mm -hmm. and anxiety wants you to always look forward yeah. instead of the moment. And, and so look forward negatively. Negatively. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Look Everything that you, you have anxiety about, it's usually something that you think could happen. And instead of like spiraling into that, I think we can, we have evolved in that. I think we recognize that better in each other. Right. I think. Right. And I know for myself, one of my biggest regrets, um, and I don't care what you say, I don't care what you say, you, you're going to have regrets. Yeah. And about, you know, raising your kids. Moms have a built in gene that is called the regret gene. <laughs> I think that we can tell um, or get the little signs, little cues that the other one is spiraling. And I know that the regrets I have as, as uh, a young mother and having mental health issues, which I do, and I'm free to talk about it because mm -hmm. I believe that re reduces the stigma. Well, this is the right podcast. <laughs> yes, it is. So um, I definitely have moments. And I found myself looking back after about 25 years, and I, I am not joking, 25 years of therapy, you know, um, long periods of time and then off and on. But I always have to usually revert back to therapy when some really serious things are happening in my life, like the death of my parents. Um, but what's the regret you're talking about? The regret is... Um, when I first got on medication, I finally told my doctor something is wrong because I was mad all the time mm -hmm. and I felt mean all the time. 
And I know that one day when I was at work, that uh, one of the people that I supervised told me I would be a really good prison guard. <laughs> so, I think at that time you probably could have yeah. done. And so the doctor, the first medication I was put on was Prozac. And once I was, you put on, on the my fridge. door. No, it was, was on the, my bedroom door. Oh, okay. You put on my bedroom door. Prozac, it can help. Uh -huh. And so it was at that point that I had a big regret thinking, what could our life have been if I had been on medication all along? Yeah, but I know what you're and you're saying you don't care what I say about that part, but it really does make us who we are. Yeah, and, it does. It's, and it's it, really, yeah. It, if anything, it might be that, who knows, maybe the topic of mental health wouldn't have been as much of a conversation if we hadn't experienced that. Like, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. maybe the only reason I knew what Prozac was is because you went on it. Mm -hmm. And then I was seeing the ads on right. the Mac and that's what I cut out was the magazine ad. I remember it was light blue. Yes, it was. It was like clouds or something. And, um, but anyway, yeah, I, I wish you wouldn't regret that, but, um, I think that it, it can help medication and therapy can help, <laughs> but we all recognize that. And I yeah. think that that's, that's something that, has evolved over time and it wouldn't have had you not been open with us about that. Right. You've never hidden anything about mental health or struggles. And I think that that is really great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. So here's a question that I think about a lot. I think I've asked you, but we're just going to put you on the spot here. Do you feel, or do you ever feel obligated in the mornings to calm it? Cause here's the deal. Okay. So let's just set the scene. When I get up with Betty, and I've talked about this before, I have a period of time that I do not turn my phone up. Like I have to have that downtime in the morning with her. I have to, you know, get my mind together. And um, I don't know, just kind of enjoy that. And plus a lot of that time, Betty is usually um, walking along at her pace and I just have to be mindful of her, you know. Um, but anyways, then she gets in her stroller and then I have like a time where I'm like, okay, now I'm, I'm ready. And then dad calls we have a, a quick conversation every morning and then you call us, but we have said sometimes you have things going on. So I'm not going to call you. I want to make sure that you call me when you're ready. Right. Um, because you have your morning routine yes, and I rituals. Mm -hmm. So we wait until we're together, but I walk, you know, like an hour and a half. So there's a good amount of time. So when you are preparing to call me in the mornings, do you ever feel obligated or feel guilty to call? And like, if you're just like, ugh. I'm not really in the mood today. No, I, in fact, you were talking about your routines and when, when you feel like talking. So I pretty much know what time that is going to be. Uh -huh. So I look forward to those conversations so much that I set an alarm that says, <laughs> I didn't know that. yes, that says, okay, now it's when you can call Shannon because I know your rituals and I know when it's okay. And I, also give a little bit of time that I know your dad's going to call because those <laughs> conversations are pretty short. So I, I tell them all the time. I tell her, um, okay, he has five <laughs> to 10 minutes and then he needs to get off the phone because he doesn't have the things to talk about that we do. Well, and he doesn't want it. To, he's probably listening to this, but he doesn't want it to go that long. No, he wants it to and be you short. And you can rest assured that if it does go longer than five minutes, Either he's probably rolling his eyes going, I wish she would stop this and wrap it up. <laughs> or he's telling me something that I'm like, wow. And if he starts talking, I'm in tune. Cause it's like, Oh, like he's having a real conversation. Not that they're not real, but you know what I mean? Like he, it's something he really needs to talk about. And then I have to really get in tune to it. But yes, he, his do go very quickly. Yes. And we have this thing where if there's something that we really want to talk about, we actually write a list on our phone. <laughs> yep. So we know these topics need to be covered. Yep. And then we have like certain minute milestones where you know, okay, you better transition uh -huh. topic here. Or you won't get these oh other things Oh my God, in. that's so funny. And uh, so we, we do that a lot. But if I don't have that conversation with her, my whole day is out of whack. Mine um, too. And I've never known a time that we couldn't talk. I agree. We can fill in space 
any point in time. And that is not the way it is with most people in my life. Most people in my life, I have to come up with something to say because working I'm, too I'm, hard. Yeah. I'm uncomfortable with silence. Me too. So if they don't talk, <laughs> <So> it works. <laughs> yeah. If they don't talk, I'm going to fill in. So then I find myself rambling and I don't like that, but yeah, we don't. And if we feel like we, you're, you're really good at this with me. Um, if, if I'm rambling or if I've told you something before, you will real quick tell me. <laughs> and if I've told you something several times, you will say crickets. And when I hear crickets, I know, I know. So we'll, yeah we'll stop and get on the next subject. But um, she might text me during the day. Uh, oh, I can't wait to tell you this in the morning. So it goes on the list. And as soon as she answers, I'm like, what do you have to tell me? Yeah. You've got to tell me. You've got to tell me about that. Yeah. Yeah. I, we do love our gossip. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking too, like when, when we said there's not as much to talk about sometimes, it usually ends up that there is. <laughs> but even... I mean, I, so my answer to this is I I never feel guilty. I'm the same way. Like it's like probably a lot of it is ritualistic and routine. But the other is I do feel weird when I haven't had that almost like a processing part of the morning of different stuff, either what's going on with you or what's going on with me. But the other thing is like I I remember even this past week being really upset about something and and I was on my walk. and I was just like really sad. And I thought, how do I get into this? Because I know it's going to bring me down more. And you called and all I said was, hey. And I hadn't said anything else. And you said, what's wrong? Yeah. And I ended up telling you. But then I was glad that we did talk about it. Yeah. And it was. Um, I did not have like dread about talking about it. I was just thinking in my head. I knew you were about to call and I was thinking, how do I get into this? Cause I really don't want to get, I don't want to spiral. Yeah. Um, it was, it was very processing. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, like when I heard that, I almost knew exactly where you're going to go and, you know, we're teetering here. So you don't want to spiral, but these are things that need to be talked about. Yeah. And you need to get your emotions out and you need to understand and that's what I try to tell you. It's okay to say, I'm hurting, I'm upset. Or it's, it's okay. okay to cry. It's okay to cry. And you don't like to do that. I don't because I'm so scared of it spiraling down. And I know, I know that avoiding avoidance is not healthy. And I'm the queen of avoidance. But I know what that downward feels like. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always scared that it's going to go there. And I need to stop thinking that every time I get upset, it's going to get there. Cause it sometimes I don't think it went there. No, I was going to say sometimes yeah. crying and, it's cathartic. and it is cathartic. And I think I was able to process some things and I'll tell you, like if, if I'm like, I can't go there, I can't go there. Yeah. yeah. Like we stop on certain topics. Um, but anyway, yeah, I think I'm glad that, to hear that you don't feel obligated or no, guilty. No, but I feel weird. You're talking about it's very real ritualistic for you. But for me, I have nothing in my life that is scheduled. If it is, it makes me mad. Yeah, I don't like it. If you tell me that something has to be done at a certain time, then... You can forget. I'm it. getting more it's and more never, like that, though. It's never going to happen because I don't like deadlines. I don't like feeling like I have to do something. I will commit to something. And then probably within the hour, I'm like, why did I do that? Yeah. Why did I do that? And then I find I'm spending the rest of the time trying to figure out how to get out. Yes. Of it. Or then you yeah. feel the guilt for that mm -hmm. part. Like if you if you tell somebody you're going to go do something, you're like feeling guilty about it. And sometimes... I just want to be like, yeah, I mean, I'll note that that's happening and um, and I'll come if I can. Yeah. I need to be more like that yeah. instead of committing. But I think I think more people are getting like that since COVID, too. Yeah, I do, too. Um, but yeah, I, I'm starting to get more and more like that. Um, OK, what annoys you about conversations with me? 
when you do the crickets. I knew you were going to yeah, say Yeah, <laughs> when you do that, because um, what I associate it with was when my mother did this to me, was tell me the same thing over and over. And I'm like, oh. but the difference between you and me uh, with my mother is I didn't go, okay, you told me that a bunch of times or have the code word crickets. Um, and then where I go with that in my head now is I'm getting like my mother. I'm getting old. Have I got dementia? But Why am I not saying this? Oh my God, it's making me feel so old. Am I, am I losing it? Is there something wrong? Am I in the beginning of Alzheimer's? But you're not. And the thing is, is it's like I tell you all the time, you've got a lot on your plate. Just like when I have a lot on my plate, I'll say to you, I might've told you this. Did I tell you this? And then I'll say it. And it could have been something I said to Jerry. And then you'll go, no, I don't know. And I'll go, oh, okay. I thought I told you that. And then I'll tell you, let's just talk about crickets real quick. Uh, cricket. If you're, this is going to age us. <laughs> Cause I don't remember when she was on Young and the Restless, but if you were a Young and the Restless person, like old school, <laughs> OG Young when and the you Restless stories. <laughs> yeah, there was a character named Cricket. And here's the thing, we say Cricket, but they all do it. But Cricket was like her character. If you watch the episode on Monday and something happened on Tuesday during her dialogue, she'd do the thing where she's looking out the window and drifting off and talking to the person who's behind her as she's gazing. And she would go through everything that happened Monday. Well, yesterday when I was with uh, Victor and and he took me to the coffee shop and we had the cafe mocha. No, we saw it. Yeah, we saw it Monday. You don't need to reiterate what happened. Yeah, but she would do that every time. I'm like, oh my god, this episode could be shortened into half its time, and they could do more content if she would shut up and quit reminding us. Because mm -hmm. if somebody missed it, they probably recorded it on their VCR <laughs> or. <laughs> They just miss it and they catch it up, catch up and soap up or digest. Yeah. Like you just, you, it, it would drive me crazy. So we have this inside joke. Now that's not inside, but it would be okay. Cricket, but now it's crickets. Yeah. So we're like crickets, crickets, like, okay, we got it. We got it. You already said that. We don't need to hear it again. And you are, you are bad on when you say, uh, because you, you volunteer at the shelter, the rescue group, you'll say, um, well, you know, this dog, Levi. Now, Levi is, and I go, oh my God, cricket. <laughs> you have told me who Levi is a thousand times. And when I went to the shelter with you, you said it again. And I go, I know, like, I, I've seen pictures of Levi. I know, I, I know him like as if I deal with him. Yeah. Because you've told me a thousand times and I've seen pictures of him. I know. I do a lot of qualifiers just like she taught with crickets. But um, I think sometimes when I talk about the dogs, because they are very, very much um, an integral part of my life, that when I talk to, to you about <laughs> them, talk to you about them, you're, <laughs> I just can picture you on the phone going, <laughs> oh my God, oh my God. And if you're not saying it, you're thinking, oh, Levi again. Well, I think uh, that's not even... Like if, if, if the question is to me, what annoys me about conversations with you? It's not even that. It's not even the cricket stuff. It's when I know you're looking at your phone. I can tell <laughs> if you're looking something up, I will have said something and I'm like, are you, are you on TikTok? Or I'll say, are you, are you Googling that? Like I can tell. Yeah. But there's sometimes that you use words or you say something about somebody because we, you know, we do keep up with, uh, not current events, what I'm like pop, pop culture. culture. And um, she'll say something about it and I haven't heard it. So I'm Googling. I can tell what, what pops up. And uh, I can tell. But words, if you use a word, I don't know. That then, rarely happens. Yeah. Well, if you do. We're pretty big well, on our. Yeah, but it's a lot of times it's with the social media and marketing and I have oh. no idea what it is. And I don't want to sound like I'm calling her Jesus again. So, um, and I probably should explain there um there was a cartoon that had a person it was jesus sitting at um, a laptop and it was like the mom underneath saying uh asking my child 
how to do something, uh, you know, technical or something like that. And I'm butchering it, but so she's Shannon. And so I call her Jesus because <laughs> I feel like, in, you know, I, I feel so old. So I feel like I call her before I call her, I will Google the hell out of that before I call you. And then I'll just say, okay, I've Googled it. I don't know. Can you explain? And then I'll say, why'd you waste so much time looking at it? Just ask me. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to be that person that just asks you something simple. Yeah, no, I I, I get that. That yeah. happens a lot to you. A lot to me mm -hmm. where I'm like, all they had to do was just a simple. And there's a website, which I think is so funny. It's, um, oh gosh, I can't remember it. I'll have to find it and link it in the show notes. But it's something to the effect of like JFGI or something. And it's like, just fucking Google it. <laughs> And so you can send a link to someone. If they ask you a dumb question, you can send them a link and it's, it goes to Google and the top, it says, just fucking Google it. And I think that's so funny. I hope you don't send that to me. Yeah, I don't, I don't, <laughs> but there are people in my life and I'm like, are you kidding me? Like all you had to do was Google that, but I digress. That's another episode. Yep. yep um, well, we've been through a lot together. Are there specific challenges that we face that you're proud that we tackled as a team, you and I? Yes. And um, that was a very sensitive, I can see you tensing up. I know. Because um, I know what it is and it's the same for me. Yeah. A very sensitive family topic that we won't go into here for privacy reasons. Um, but it devastated us and it um i would i think it it we could say that it pretty much broke us yeah. mentally for a while yeah. and um the coming back from that and i don't think we've really come back from that but i think that we work on that still today yeah and it's been years in the making um but it's it's easier for us because it can only affect us. Nobody else can be invested in this like we are. Yeah. And I think that we help each other compartmentalize because that's the only thing you can do. There gets to a point where you, you can't, you can't fix it. Yeah. You can't work through it any more than what we've done. So once in a while we'll break and yeah. talk about it, but then we'll both real quickly close it because it's so painful. And for me, I like to say that's behind this door and I've got it locked. And every once in a while I open that door, but then I have to sh slam it shut again. Yeah. And so working through that was probably the most difficult thing I faced in my life. And I know yours. Yeah. And we still face it. But I mean, it can make me cry. Just no, I know. I'm, yeah. I'm biting the sides I, of my tongue so that yeah. I don't. But I remember I said I don't like to cry <laughs> because I'm scared of what's going to happen. But it's something that I wouldn't have thought you would have survived. And I think that the fact that you invested, because, you know, that is something that I wouldn't have been able to handle if you weren't here. And so I think sometimes... Thank God you invested that time to go into therapy every week and then calling her if you need an extra session. And, um, and, I, and I'm about to cry now, but I yeah. appreciate the fact that you, um, that you let me sometimes say, I can't talk about that. Yeah. And I know how bad that is for you because you've said before that, well, you're the only other person that understands. And it's true, but I sometimes, and I'm better about it because yeah. I'm working through it. Yeah. And I think that uh, that is mine too, that I'm so proud. I, we like tackled as a team. We haven't tackled it, but I think that we are living through it and we work together as a team through that challenge. I think what you said about we're living through it because it's not over. Right. It's, it's not going to be over. Right. And um, so you learn that you can't, you can't stay in that hole. Um, but you and I have helped each other because you know, when I am going there 
you know how to, because I have to talk about it. You don't like to, but I have to when it hits like that. Yeah. And I can say I'm on a ledge or yeah. whatever. And, um, and so you let me talk. I'll say, I think then I do, I do. Then you let me talk about it. But there are certain times of the year or certain things you know is going to bring it up to me. Yeah. And you try your best to get my mind on something else. Yeah. So I don't have to um, dwell. Yeah. And I guess that's the best word is that we can't dwell. That's exactly right. Yeah. I think you're right in that we can't avoid it where it's not in the house, but it can stay behind that door. Yeah. <laughs> that you can open it and deal with it and then shut it back. I yeah. think, I mean, I, I think that's how... I think that's just how we're going to have to deal with it. Yeah. And I think, and I guess I want to say this to put it out in the world. And I've said this to you so many times, but it's because I'm, you know, I'm an expert in the field of mental health therapy. <laughs> um, I think people need to know that when you go to therapy, it's especially when you start it, you need to understand that it's the toughest time when you start it, because that therapist has to know what's going on. So you relive. And that's what I was telling you yeah. is you need to understand and not walk away. And there's some people in, you know, that we know that have gone through therapy that have gone once or twice and said, I can't do this. Yeah. You have to do it because if you don't, you can't work through the other side and learn how to manage so, yeah. Um, and I think that yeah. like, you know why I switched therapists. Yeah. And so uh, when I got the new therapist, I think my biggest stress was how do I catch her up? Yeah. How do I, how do I tell her about this big thing that's in our life? And it, number one, it makes sense because it doesn't. But then number two, how do I express to her where we are with this? And I, yeah, it has been really hard, but the reason I know she's great is because I already have nuggets I'm taking away, but I like that. She says, um, just tell me where you are today. Yeah. I like that. Too. Like just, mm -hmm. just where are you right now? What's bothering you right now? And then, and then it, we work through it. But anyway. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's, that's good. And that's also a great thing to bring up when you start therapy, that may not be the therapist for you. So don't right. say, I can't go to therapy because That's of right. this. Because you had recently an episode where you, I mean, not an episode. I don't want to say, that. Session. Want to say that about me. A session? <laughs> me. I had an episode. Oh. But you, oh. no, you went into a session and you immediately got some feedback that really pissed you off. Yeah. And, and when she told me about it, I said, no, that's not the therapist for you because the feedback was so inappropriate. Right. And um, so you switched and you liked this person. And I'll just say it was about, it was about uh, pet loss and grief and what I've been through in the past, which I've talked about in here before and how a lot of people don't get it. And so if you're dealing with something and you have a therapist who you feel like is not, um, whether it's enough empathy, whether it's understanding whether it's anything that gives you vibes that you're like, this person, I'm going to have resentment towards him or her because of what he or she just said to me. And you know, it might not like all the things you hear from your therapist, but mm -hmm. this was bad. She did not get it. And I was like, okay, yeah, we're done. <laughs> we're done. Um, but now I knew how important that was to make sure I find somebody that does get it. But yeah. Anyway, we digress. Again. We digress. I uh, should do a whole um, episode or a podcast on mental health yeah, experiences. It is interesting yeah. that we've we've talked about that a lot, which mm -hmm. I think is interesting because of this relationship. Mm -hmm. Well, look, and we're not going to cry anymore <laughs> as I say this, but you know that you're my best friend. You're my my life inspiration. You're oh. the the strongest. Um, <laughs> You're the strongest. Um, you're like the core, my core, you know. Are there moments that you see with me saying that? Are there moments that you see yourself in me? Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, first of all, you're the spitting image of me <laughs> as I was growing up. Um, but yes, especially the things that hurt, you know, the things that hurt. And so I, 
I will say to you with the remembrance of how I felt and I don't want you to go there. Yeah. Um, For example, I could have been told something by my parents that hurt me so bad Mm -hmm. and I will remember that and I will temper. I don't ever lie to you, Yeah. but I will temper the way it's told to you. And then I get a response from you that I think, man, I wish I'd have had that kind of response. Oh, you know, wow. I wish I could have done that. And, um, and so, yes. And, and the, the pet thing is, you know, our love of our love animals and, and pet. And yeah. do you, do you remember the first dog that we got and what you said? I can feel his bones. I can feel it. <laughs> you were like, I, I don't, I don't know if I like this. I can feel his bones. Yeah. And because I picked him up and I just, I'd never, I don't think I've held a never, dog before. Yeah. And you, you picked him up and you're like, I can feel his bones. Yeah. And I said, well, I can feel your bones, <laughs> you know? So um, it, it was really funny that you've evolved to this. And so those loves, I, I see me and you and um, the empathy I've always known was there, but you know, you don't show it much because you don't like to show your feelings. And I'm an open book. I will go tell the neighbor when I'm having yes, a bad day. I, I mean, I don't, I don't mind sharing and I probably overshare at times, but um, <laughs> I want you to share. And um, I think you only do it with me. And that was me for a long time. Yeah. And um I like that you are evolving. I was going to say, I'm getting a lot better. And so I see the process that you're going through. I see that in me. Yeah. I just think it's taking you a little bit longer time to let people see it. Yeah. Than me. And, and the, you know, we can spiral, but I'm the one that says I'm going to be in the corner in a fetal position, <laughs> sucking my thumb when things are going bad and you go very emotional, but you don't go that far. Or here's the thing. Or you don't let it. I do. You know. get, I was going to say, I do get that far, but I don't. Yeah. I go, I go too far without letting someone know that. Yeah. Um, but when you show empathy, I'm so proud. Yeah. I'm so proud. <laughs> I knew that was going to come up. <laughs> Okay, what's one of your favorite memories from our adventures together? And I can't wait to share mine. <laughs> There's some I hope you don't talk about. Um, no, mine's funny. Mine's and, good. I know. It's funny. Um, all of my travel stuff yeah. with you has been the best. And I think the first trip that we took to New York, I think, because we went in like, did we spend two nights? I think we spent one night in the hotel. I think it was one night. Yeah. And you're talking about the David Letterman? Yeah. Yeah. And all the stuff that we did in those two oh, days. Oh, God. And we were absolutely Southern gift. Oh, and we I, were. I remember when we got, um, was, it, was oh. it the Gray Line? I think it was the um, the people that picked us up and took us to the hotel. Yeah, um, I think anyway, so. Anyway, when we got on there and everybody was speaking their <laughs> New York accent, because as Southerners, we we know that people, you know, judge us for our accent and stuff. But we got on there and I thought, oh, my God, we're going to be taken advantage of. We're going to be, you know. <laughs> we were so naive. So then. naive. And um, now and we, got we walk around New York like we own it. Yeah. And so I remember telling you, don't speak. <laughs> And when we did speak, they didn't even just say like, "Are you from the South?" They'd say, "Are you from North Carolina?" Yeah, the guy that still on happens the entire to me. state building because there's a few elevators that you take. Yeah, and one, he got off. I think we were coming down. He got off and he stopped the elevator door and said, "Are you from North Carolina?" And we were like, "Have we got?" Because so many people had said it was like, well, "Yeah, we we're wearing, wearing our shirts, shirts or something." Or stuff but we on our head because they knew our Carolina accent, yeah. which is different from South Carolina. Yeah, it did, and of course, North Carolina is different from one side to the left. Yeah, I mean, left to the right. So, well, mine yeah. is. Oh God. <laughs> 
think about it and just die. Mine is us doing the um the plane spotting. And oh, that was yes in St. Martin. Yes. And the funniest thing to me is you <laughs> you wanting to be, I forgot what they call it when they take off and the, the jet um the blast or whatever. Like it literally I mean it's very dangerous. <laughs> But it, the jet blast, you're so close on the beach <laughs> that you, uh, I think it's called Maho Beach or something, plane spotting. I'll link to that. I'll yeah. link to the the reel of you fall, about <laughs> falling over. And then I'm going to link to the, the, the blog. But just burying my feet in the sand so I could get video of you getting ready. And the, the jet, jet blast, the That's jet what, blast, yeah. and you get ready to take off, and you, you just waving, <laughs> waving at the pilots as they went over, and hey! one waved back. I know, but it's just <laughs> the funniest. When I think about our adventures, it just, oh my god, and just like how how like just funny things are, and but it was never as funny until I went back to see the video. Yeah. I mean, I remember laughing so giddy, laughing. At the time, even though we had sand blowing in our face, but it was the funniest, most fun thing I think I've ever done with you. I thought I was going to fall over and roll like tumbleweed. Yeah. I mean, that some was... people did. <laughs> Which I don't know how you didn't. <laughs> oh, gosh. It was, it was really, I was thinking about like the, um, where we went and it might have been there where we were getting in the water and the current was <laughs> yes. really strong you didn't right like the beginning. It. and I don't mind water I love it and I love the color of it and that was one of the things I was so excited about going but you were nervous there I was nervous because I couldn't every time I stepped down I could feel it pulling me so strong and you were like well just get past it <laughs> and then I kept yelling but I can't get back in you said you'll you'll help me get back in and I was like no you can't get me back in and so I was I was disappointed because I thought I'd just oh. walk out in bath water, you know? Well, I think that day it was just a little more rough too. Yeah. But um, yeah. And then the worst of it is seeing like little six-year-old kids yeah. doing it and enjoying it. And I'm thinking, oh, yeah. yeah. But that that plane spotting will probably go Oh, down. yeah. Yeah. I think it was great. But the New York trip was good too. I, yeah. I, I kind of well, forgot about that. Well, all of our New York trips. All of them. Every year. Every now. year in June. Yes. I love New, New York, York in June. June. Yeah. <laughs> How about you? Okay. Anyway, let's keep going, but don't look at the screen because okay. I have your fast five questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, number one is text or Marco Polo? Marco Polo. I agree. Number two, now this one's hard. Dateline or 48 hours? Probably Dateline because of- um, Keith Morrison. Keith Morrison. <laughs> Keith Morrison leans. I oh, love that. Me too. Me too. I do love both yeah. of them. When he was looking over at one and he was, I don't know if you can see me propped and he goes, so when people thought of you as a whore, <laughs> I mean, I will never forget that in all my life. Or I just so. love when he's like, this was a quiet town until yeah. it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Number three. This one's good. Anakista zip lining. Or rappelling down a skyscraper. Uh, rappelling down the skyscraper. Stop it. Are you serious? Yeah, it was like 33 floors. But nothing scared me as bad as um, as bad as that. The zip lining? Zip line. Uh, because we, I really thought we would just go real easy over some treetops. And we did right in the beginning. And then all of a sudden, it opened up to, I think, pretty sure i could see the top of hell yes it was, it was so like a scary. ravine like just it, it yeah it was terrifying w w that'll be another time another episode yeah okay it's number like a canyon it yes. is like a canyon yes and also the rappelling down a skyscraper mom did that for a fundraiser for twice. the special olympics twice yes crazy yes all right number four paul paul or bubba <laughs> If you don't understand this, go back to episode 67 about the Murdoch murders. <laughs> I think I, I liked Paw Paw because it was so stupid. And you know, a dog's name is Bubba, but it was so funny because Bubba. Yes. Uh, but Paw Paw was like out of the blue, the kind of thing that it was not the actual 
graphic part of the murder. But when he said Paw Paw on the stand, everybody took notice. Like, yeah. Who's Paw Paw? Do you know what I think is interesting is um, Ro -Ro. What's, what's the other the other son's name? Um Oh my God. I know we're forgetting Buster. It. Buster. Buster. <laughs> yeah. Buster. <laughs> um, when they interviewed Buster later, the Fox thing, um, he never called him Paw Paw. No, never. Nobody ever mm -hmm. did that. No, nobody ever called him Paw Paw. Nobody ever called the friend Ro Ro. No. Uh, what was the other thing that he doubled up? The, the, um, when it, the pigs or I can't remember. Yeah. But nevertheless. All right. Number five. And we asked this of everybody. And of course, we had to ask you too ketchup or mustard? Catch them. Okay, it was quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the serious question, like we haven't been serious all along, is what does a life well lived mean to you? I think because I've listened to your podcast so many times, I figured this was coming, so I was thinking about it. Um, I think it's when you can wake up in the morning and you can go to bed at night in peace, knowing mm -hmm. that you did everything you could do to be kind, be helpful, be generous, and uh, to be mindful of where somebody else might be at in their life. I really think that's very important is not to judge a book by its cover because they could really be struggling. Mm -hmm. And um, But when you lay your head down at night um, and you say, I can feel at peace because of what I did today, I yeah. think that's, that's um, a life well lived. I think that's good. I think peace, I've talked about this before, is underrated. Mm -hmm. Contentment is underrated. Uh huh. Because um, sometimes that's all you have. Yeah. And that's all you can get. That's exactly right. And mm -hmm. it, it's attainable. Uh huh. Whereas uh, having a happy life, it, that seems very unattainable at some point. Yeah. Um, you just got to deal like with it day by day. You, you are not ever going to have anything negative, which is not possible. Right. But that sounds like you're saying that is never. And if anything negative happens, then your whole life is wasted because yeah. you didn't have a happy life. Well, mom, tell, because we haven't talked about this and we'll, we'll wrap up with this. Tell everybody where they can find you as a proud sponsor of our podcast yes. um, and find your products. Should they, should they want to go and do that? Which you should. I sort of say, well, of course they'd love uh -huh. to. Southernoakartisan.com. So that's one word, southernoakartisan.com. And you will find our soy candles, which are sustainable and healthy, no chemicals, no um, negative um, anything for your health. And they're, they're so good for you and your pets, which is a big deal for me. That's right. Yeah. Me too. Me As too. we have five dogs in the next room. That's right. Yeah. Because she fosters. and I foster and um, I just um, adopted two senior citizens. Um, <laughs> hospice dogs. Hospice dogs. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, all this will be linked down the show notes. Anything that we talked about today, anything we referenced. And of course, Southern Oak Artisan, which you've heard a lot about and you will continue to. And um, until next time. That's it. I'm sure there'll be more. Yeah. I love Paul Paul or Bubba. <laughs>